Hey everybody, just want to welcome you to week 13, module 13 for ME14, Mechanics of Solids. So within this module, we're going to be doing a couple different things. The first thing we'll be doing is starting our topic of columns. We're also going to be spending some time with our group project. So this is the module where we'll be giving the other groups your problem for them to solve, and then you'll be solving one other group's problem and turning it back into them for them to grade it for you. So all the bookkeeping items for this week, you do have your quiz number 13. This has been posted to Blackboard, and it'll do on by Friday at 4 p.m. A reminder, as always, I do have office hours scheduled from 9.30 to 10.30 a.m. on Wednesdays. If this time doesn't work for you, please send me an email, a message, or a chat, and we'll find a time that does work for both of us. So now let's take a look at our calendar for the rest of the semester. If we take a look here, we're in our week number 13, module 13, looking at chapter 10 in our textbook covering the topic of columns. So within this week, we'll go through the stability of the structures, eccentric loading and secant formula, centric load design, and eccentric load design. You'll also have your quiz number 13. And the other ticket item for this week is that you do have your group project solutions for the other group that you're solving their problem for. And this is going to be due on 429. This will be through Black board as an assignment. So then we'll move on to our week 14. So in week 14, we'll get to our chapter 11, looking at energy methods. And this will be your last homework assignment of the semester. So this has been pushed back here. This will be assigned on the third and due on the 10th. And this is your final homework, homework number five. And you'll also have your final reading quiz, quiz number 14. Then we'll get into our last partial week of the semester, week number 15, and this is just going to be your group project presentation. So this will be turning in your video going through your problem and your solution for your project. So I just want to go over the group project in a little bit more detail and take a look at some of the milestones and dates that we've had posted. So we've already completed the first milestone here. So you've already created and formed your teams and submitted this and we've created the groups on Blackboard. Then last week on Thursday, you submitted your group's problems with your solution via Blackboard assignment. So what's going to happen this week is on module 13, you're going to be solving one of the other group's problems, turning it back into that group. They're going to grade that for you. So that's the next step within our group project. And then the final step is where you're going to be creating that video, doing a virtual presentation that you're going to submit to Blackboard of that video of you going through your solution to your problem that you created. So just a reminder, these are the nine different teams that we can see here. We have Team UVM, Team Yellow, the Fantastic Four, Mechanics Madness, Torsion Loads, Team Squidward, Alpha, Everything, and the leftovers. So these are the nine teams. So again, we're going to be just giving one other group your problem to solve. So I'm going to go through that next and how that organization goes. So here is the assignment organization. So Team UVM gives their problem to Team Yellow. Team Yellow then solves this and turns it back into Team UVM for grade. And then Team Yellow gives their problem to Fantastic Four. Fantastic Four solves this and turns it in for Team Yellow to grade. Fantastic Four gives their problem to the Mechanics Madness, and Mechanics Madness solves this and turns it back into Fantastic Four to grade. Now Mechanic Madness gives their problem that they created to the Torsion Loads. Torsion Loads solves this and turns it back in to the Mechanics Madness to grade. The Torsion Loads gives their problem to Team Squidward. Team Squidward solves this and turns it back into Torsion Load to grade. Then we'll have that Team Squidward gives the problem they created to Alpha. Team Alpha solves this and turns it back into Team Squidward to grade. Alpha gives their problem to everything. Everything solves this and turns it back into alpha to grade. And everything gives the problem they created to the leftovers. Leftovers solves this and turns it back into everything to grade. And finally, the leftovers gives their problem to Team UVM, back up there again. And Team UVM solves this and turns it into the leftovers to grade. So this is the assignment organization of who you're going to be solving, whose problem you're going to be solving, who you're turning it into. So no reminder for these group projects. Well, this is going to be the evaluation criteria. So your problem, your solution you're handing it to me this week is worth 25% of that grade. So then you'll be grading the other group's solution to your problem on that same 10 point criteria that we've used before. And this is also going to count as 25% of the grade as well of how you do as graded by the other groups. And last 50% of it is going to be based upon your presentation of your solution, that pre-recorded video that you're going to be submitting to Blackboard going through your solution to your problem. So now as we begin our module 13, we're taking a look at chapter 10 in our textbook with the topic of columns. So within this module, we're going to discuss the stability of the structure, its ability to support a given load without experiencing a sudden change in configuration. In this discussion, we're going to be focusing on columns, that is the analysis and design of vertical prismatic members supporting axial compressive loads. 
So within this module here, we have a couple objectives. So upon the completion of this module, you should have a working knowledge and be able to describe the behavior of columns in terms of stability. Look at Euler's formula for columns using effective lengths to account for different end conditions. Develop a secant formula for the analysis of eccentrically loaded columns. Uh, use the allowable stress design for columns made of steel, aluminum, and wood. Provide a basis for using load resistance factor design for steel columns. And present two design approaches for the eccentrically loaded columns, uh, and particularly taking a look at the allowable stress method and the interaction method. So as this relates to our textbook, this is going to be chapter 10. The first module, break this down 13.1, will be sections 1 and 2 from chapter 10. And for module 13.2, this will be sections 3 and 4 from chapter 10. So we'll be breaking this module down into two different sections, 13.1 and 13.2. For module 13.1, taking a look at the topic of columns from chapter 10, specifically looking at stability and eccentric loading. So within this, we'll be looking at the stability of different structures and talk about eccentric loading and the secant formula. So within this, some activities we'll be doing is going through our theory for the above topics here, talking about some of the governing equations, some practical applications, and then going through some problem solving. So as we continue on with our second section for module 13, our module 13-2, we're taking a look again at our columns. In particular, we're going to be looking at our load design. So within this here, we're going to be looking at our centric load design as well as our eccentric load design and comparing those two. So within this, we'll be going over our theory related to both of those, our governing equations, looking at some practical applications, and then going through some problem solving. 